Good morning. Welcome to worship at the First Presbyterian Church of Easton from our beautiful sanctuary. Welcome, and for folks joining us online, welcome. Today we celebrate and mark Mission Sunday, so my thanks to the mission team um, for helping uh, put together today's service. And um, we are excited to mark this time and celebrate it with you. A few announcements as we begin our service. I hope that you have um, noticed that um, on a regular basis, we sent out Friday announcements. And one of the things we are highlighting each week is something we call Hunger Should End, Let the People Say Amen. And it's a series of little notifications that follow the acronym A-M-E-N. Um, those are actions, meditations, so prayers and scripture, education, and new habits, that's amen, that help us think about ending hunger. So I hope that you are looking for those in, um, in your weekly announcements. For our announcements today, um, we are having the sanctuary is open midweek. If you are somebody who would like to come and pray, we have midweek meditations. Um, also wanted to mention, um, I don't know if our announcements are syncing up with our sheet, but um, next Sunday is All Saints Sunday. Next Sunday? Two Sundays from now. Um, if you would like to uh, have a loved one listed and celebrated their life and their passing, um, please contact our office. We will, of course, celebrate the saints who've passed away this past year that are connected with our church. So please let us know so we can have those names. Um, this being Mission Sunday, I invite you, um, we are blessed to have already filled up signups for our blessing box and for safe harbor meals through the end of this year. So we're already looking at signups for January and moving forward. So there are sign-up sheets for the blessing box and safe harbor currently in the back of the sanctuary. There are also sign-up sheets for flowers and coffee hour in the narthex, so lots of places to engage. And there'll also be those sign-up sheets downstairs after worship. Sorry, folks online, you will not be able to celebrate with us with cake um, and some other goodies. Uh, but if you'd like to join us downstairs uh, for coffee hour, please join us to celebrate our mission and to have more opportunity for sign-up sheets. So. Um, please join us. A big thank, thank you. Um, Ruth Ann is here and um, with Eileen and Shirley. They had a really busy day on Wednesday with friends helping friends at Boscov's, and they raised $605 for our church, which is a, a new record. So thank you, Ruth Ann and Eileen and Shirley. That is just a wonderful support for our ministry. So, and thank you all, who are anyone who supported that. Friends, um, choir rehearsals continue on Wednesdays, uh, 5.15 for chancel choir, handbells at 6.30, right here in the sanctuary. Um, let's see what other, do we have any other announcements for today? I believe those are my announcements. Ah, yes, and for Cheryl, thank you, Cheryl. Um, another successful fundraiser uh, happened over Garlic Fest, for those of you who um, helped to park cars. And Cheryl gave me the figure and I told her I wouldn't remember it. And I know it's 23 something, so over $2,000 um, from that parking lot fundraiser. So thank you for those who helped before. But now is another opportunity for you to help because we're coming up on Bacon Fest. So there are sign up sheets in the narthex. You don't park the cars. I hope I didn't make it sound like that. Um, <laughs> Uh, the cars come and park themselves by their owners, <laughs> and, um, but it's, it's, it's really a wonderful fundraiser for us. So um, that is the first weekend of November, um, and sign-up sheets are in, again, the Narthex, and you can talk with Cheryl Keller, and if you're not here, anytime we make announcements about things to sign up, 
you can always call the church office and we will make sure that we can sign you up. And that's a wonderful fundraiser because it is outside. Um, my last announcement is a thanks to anybody that helped with our garden. Um, for folks that are here today, um, you'll see how fresh and lovely it is looking. So thank you for that team who is doing that good work. And we are looking forward to having a new sign in the box, um, in the main sign out front, to add to the beauty of our front. So, um, those are my announcements. We are a busy church, friends. And with that, um, I would like to switch. I would literally like to um, switch hats, put on my Minute for Mission hat, and I would like to um, invite us and the mission team to come forward for our Minute for Mission. We celebrate mission today and our focus in this year to join hands to end hunger. When did we see Jesus hungry and give him something to eat? When you shared and showed commitment to Christ and dropped off or carried hundreds of pounds of pasta to the food pantry of Project of Easton. Our, our basket is up front. Thank God for your contributions and for the work of Project of Easton to end the cycle of poverty in our community. When did we see Jesus hungry and offer something to eat? As you knocked on doors of our elderly neighbors and offered them sustaining food from Meals on Wheels, Thank God for your contributions and for the work of Meals on Wheels to provide nutrition and to end the isolation of senior citizens in our community. When did you see Jesus hungry and offer something to eat? When you teamed up with other family or church friends to help feed the men and women who stay at Safe Harbor of Easton's shelter, Thank God for your contributions for the work of Safe Harbor in Easton to provide emergency shelter for single men and women in our area and for the Arise program, which works to give adults extra support so that they can secure permanent housing. When did we see Jesus hungry and offer something to eat? When you the members of First Presbyterian Church of Easton teamed up with other family and church friends to fill our blessing box. Thank God for your contributions and for the commitment of this church community to serving our hungry neighbors. Thanks be to God. Friends, will you join your voices with mine in this morning's call to worship? 
where we are called to both serve God and to worship God together. Blessed are those who serve the poor. They will be called the children of God. Blessed are those who share the wealth. They will be called the children of God. Blessed are those who open doors. They will be called the children of God. Blessed are those who break down walls. They will be called the children of God. Blessed are those who live their faith. They will be called the children of God. Blessed are those who show Christ's love. They will be called the children of God. Let the children of God join hands in praise, prayer, and service. Let us worship God. be 
seated. We come before God, trusting in God's grace and mercy. And so together, we lift up this morning's prayer of confession, ending in a time of personal, silent confession. Let us lift our prayer to God. Gracious Creator, have mercy on us. We have eaten our fill of this world's bounty and allowed the leftovers to spoil. Help us to take only what we need. We have used all our resources and taken those of others. Help us to take only what we need. We have created disasters in our response to disasters. Help us to learn. We have believed we were right simply because of our wealth. Help us to listen. We have received more than we need and rarely given the excess away. Help us to share. We have failed to fix our systems of waste. Help us to conserve. Come to us, Holy Spirit, and hear our prayers. Forgive us these things and those that we have not named. Empower us to join our hands together. Amen. Brothers and sisters, siblings in Christ, the good news is this. The steadfast love of God never ceases. God's mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is God's faithfulness. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel in Christ Jesus. We are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. Scripture reading is done in dramatic response, um, so I would ask those of you on this side if you will note the piece that says piano side, if you would read that section at the appropriate time. And there's also a section for the organ side. This is all of you, if you will read that section. Listen here for the word of God. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates his sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come. You that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. The righteous will then answer him.
I tell you, whenever you did this for one of the least important of these members of my family, you did it for me. Then he will say to those on his left, away from me. I was hungry, but you would not feed me. Thirsty, but you would not give me a drink. I was a stranger, but you would not welcome me. Naked, but you would not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, but you would not take care of me. Then they will answer him. I tell you, whenever you refuse to help one of these least important ones, you refuse to help me. I pray, Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and redeemer. Amen. How many of you know something about sheep and goats? So I've taken uh, youth groups to retreat at Heifer International's uh, Northeast Farm on multiple occasions. And this is where I've had my experience with goats and sheep. Heifer International, as most of you know, is an organization that distributes animals, along with agricultural training and some agricultural type of products, to families in need around the world as a way of providing self-sufficiency and ending hunger. They have an educational center, a working farm in Rutledge, Massachusetts. Groups go to the farm and they learn about hunger in our country and around the world and they do so in a hands-on way. They have, um, they have little centers set up uh, throughout their farm that mimic places around the world. So if you're going to have an experience with Peru, you go to a certain corner um, where they have a little camp set up and they teach you um, how to make Peruvian food. Um, and I remember once um, they do it, we had blue eggs because that's the kind of eggs that the chickens there lay. So they try to give you hands-on experience to enrich your understanding of hunger around the world. And part of that hands-on experience at the farm is every morning you go to the big barn and in the big barn there are large chalkboards and there are chores written on the chalkboards. So when you walk in, you have to pick a chore that you are going to do that day. Everybody who's there does it. And then you're given a laminate sheet that tells you how to do your chore. So if you've never done something before, you have a little cheat sheet. And then there's volunteers all over the campus to help you actually do the chores. This is where I've had my encounters with sheep and goats. I have learned to milk a cow. Not a very nice experience, I will say. Or, nice experience, no, cleaning out a horse stall, not fun either. Slopping the pigs was kind of fun, I have to say. Uh, one year, our church youth group went during lambing season. Oh, friends, these sweet newborn creatures, these little lambs were adorable. But they are so loud. You would be so surprised how they baw at their mothers. And I understand where the stereotype of sheep being stupid comes from because it's very hard to get the attention of sheep. And we would have to, we were told if we wanted to motivate the mother sheep, we would have to hold the babies at their eyesight. You couldn't hold it too high or too far away. Um, you had to hold it up close where they could really see it and hear it in order to try to move a sheep because you just couldn't motivate them. They're very stubborn. Now, goats, my experience was quite different. Goats were very easy to motivate. They would do anything for food, anything. So I learned to milk goats. And you had to 
get them to their pen to milk them with a treat. Sheep and goats. What do you know about sheep and goats? Done some goat yoga, perhaps? No? I know more about dogs and cats than I do about sheep and goats. But 2,000 years ago, in the Middle East, our ancestors in faith would have been very familiar with shepherding, with goats, and with sheep. They also would have lived in a world where kings and emperors wielded the highest authority and power over the subjects in their kingdom. I don't know much about living under the rule of monarchs, about as much as I know about herding sheep and goats. But that is exactly what our parable today pivots on dramatically from Matthew 25. In this parable, Christ is king. All the nations of the world have been gathered at an end time. And before him, they, they recognize his majesty. Finally, the ways and the will of God have become the law of the land. The kingdom has come. And as such, the sovereign of the kingdom also begins to play the role of judge. From the throne, the king uses his authority to separate people. And to illustrate the separation of these individuals one from another, here come our goats and sheep. Using the example of sorting, which would have been familiar in this agrarian age, the parable describes how the shepherd, right, the shepherd separates his flock, goats and sheep, who were grazing in the same pasture. Take note, a shepherd with these animals out in his field would have loved and cared for each and every one of those sheep and goats. Now today we have to forget any stereotypes of what we think sheep and goats mean. It, doesn't, it isn't relevant to this reading. Forget the references to sheep being blind followers or goats standing for the greatest of all time. There are simply two categories of people who have now come to the end and are standing before their God to be held accountable for their behavior for their choices, for how they lived in faith. One group has demonstrated their faithfulness by performing acts of loving kindness. The other has not. From Matthew 25, we heard, Then the righteous will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? When was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did to the least of these, you did to me. The charge to care for the poor and the disadvantaged can be found throughout Scripture. It is, a, it is a powerful call in the Old Testament, but it is especially proclaimed by Christ Jesus. Christ announces the nearness of God's kingdom. God's kingdom is come. While, what did he do? While he cured the sick, welcomed those who were shunned, and provided food for the hungry. And he orders his disciples to carry on his ministry by doing likewise. Friends, our church community has committed itself to following in the loving, kind ways of Christ's lambs. You have sought to listen and act upon the call to be faithful to Christ our King. You have. He orders his disciples to carry on his ministry, and you as disciples have responded. This is what we celebrate on Mission Sunday. It's not self-congratulatory today. It's a celebration and a recommitment to serving Christ 
by serving our neighbor. The joy of following Jesus is not a joy that is left to some future heaven. The joy of following Jesus to feed the hungry is something you have done and experienced here and now. So many of you have shared stories with me about going outside to fill the blessing box and seeing a neighbor come by and receive that food. You are feeding the hungry right here in your neighborhood. So many of you over the years, and especially in these past 18 difficult months, you have fed our neighbors who are hungry by volunteering with Meals on Wheels. By bringing pasta and filling that basket so that we have a record every week of hundreds of pounds of food that we bring. You, you, this congregation, have embraced the blessing box which our mission team has introduced to you this year. Friends, hunger is real. According to Feeding America, due to the effects of the corona pandemic, more than 42 million people in our country may experience food insecurity. It means that they wonder where their next meal may come from, including a potential 13 million children. The pandemic has mostly impacted who? Families that were already facing hunger and living paycheck to paycheck. God has created and given us a planet full of bounty. There is enough for all of God's children to be fed. We know this. And we, as God's disciples, are called to be good stewards of that bounty, to take and to share the riches of this beautiful earth. The harvest is plentiful, and we should celebrate. Friends, as we continue to move into this year, we are joining hands to end hunger. So I want to give you a little, a little uh, encouragement to do a few things in your life continue to give, yes. But I wonder if you still say grace before every meal. Yes, every meal. It doesn't have to be said out loud. But I invite you to be aware of the food that you have. This is one of the things that our mission team invites you. Be aware of the quality of food that you have in your life. We know that um, there are communities called food deserts usually low-income areas that are lacking grocery stores, farmers markets, healthy food providers. And some studies have suggested that half of all low-income neighborhoods in the United States are food deserts. Another thing, be aware of the amount of food that you discard. With employees working from home, students learning remotely, people ordering takeout foods, all these things have increased both our food bills, but also the amount of food that is wasted. Even pre-pandemic, we wasted massive amounts of quality food every day. Awareness and gratitude, my friends, helps us to remain committed to Christ's cause, to seeing that the least of these in our communities can also experience God's blessings. We know that this is what God intended. So I invite you, in this season when we work to end hunger, to be aware and to be grateful. Thank you, each of you, and this church family that has contributed to our, and is thinking about contributing to our stewardship campaign because we can use a portion of what you give to support the mission of this church. We thank you for helping to fund our mission partners, like Project and Safe Harbor. Thank you for being kind-hearted and generous lambs of God. Know that your mission team will continue to remind you and invite you to participate in Christ's call to serve the least of these. 
they will be those loud little lambs that call us to do what Christ has called us. Friends, the kingdom of God is near, and the need of God's children is great. We must continue to do the work that Christ commands. In today's reading, both the sheep and the goats were surprised. They were surprised by what Christ the King was asking of them. When did we see you? Both of them responded. But unlike them, friends, we know what Jesus calls us to do. To do good, to love neighbor, to share in concrete and practical ways, to live a life of righteousness. Today I invite us to recommit ourselves to putting in the time, the effort, the financial support to make sure we are doing the work of Christ's kingdom here and now. Thanks be to God. Amen. Alleluia. And with that, I remind us of Christ's call to give generously to the work of this church. I need to remember to move towards the camera. Friends there, the Psalms urge us to give thanks to God at all times for everything God has provided. In gratitude, we offer to God a portion of what God has given to us. Please leave your offering in the plate in the back of the sanctuary, or make your gifts online or via mail. And know that next week we celebrate Stewardship Sunday and look forward to receiving your pledge. Thanks be to God. Let's share the prayers of the people. Let us pray for the poor, hungry, and neglected in our community and all over the world. May their cries for daily bread inspire works of compassion among us until no one hungers again. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the farmers and field workers throughout the world who grow and gather the food which sustains mankind. Let us pray for all who face natural disasters or who lack access to water and other resources and for whom it is difficult to produce enough food for their communities. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the health of our elders, of children, and of families around the world. We pray that all God's people may be empowered to strengthen their communities and repair the breaches which divide nations and people. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for an end to the waste and desecration of God's creation for access to the fruits of creation to be shared equally among all people, and for communities and nations to be good stewards of the earth and the water God has given us. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all nations and people who already enjoy the abundance of creation and the blessings of prosperity that their hearts may be lifted up to the needs of the poor and afflicted. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Let us pray for the ongoing work of our mission partners here in Easton. Safe Harbor, Project of Easton, Meals on Wheels. Let us pray for our church. Was, was there one there? I'm sorry. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our church, that our congregation have faith in your love and care for us. We especially pray for all who are ill and who face hardship. We thank you for blessing us and calling us to your mission. Encourage and inspire us, the members and friends of First Presbyterian Church of Easton, to continue to join our hands together to end hunger near and far. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, before I give our benediction, I was going to invite you once again to come downstairs to the fellowship hall and enjoy some fellowship time together. But if you take a deep breath in this space, right now you can smell the bread that is baking downstairs. Sorry, friends online, it is, mm, sounds, smells so good, but I hope that acts as an invitation to you and reminds you of God's truly generous nurturing, sustaining spirit. 
Friends, do what you have learned and received and seen and heard in Christ, and the peace of God will be with you. And may that peace which surpasses all understanding guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Okay. 